Like most passionate people, I have a fondness for vehicles. Trains, boats, cars, planes, you name it. With this passion in mind, I've been flocking to several vehicle-centric animation, especially the ones that talk. Projects such as Pixar's Cars, Tugs, Shuggington, Rory the Racing Car, Bob the Builder, Tayo the Little Bus, and most importantly of all, Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends. I grew up with these things ever since I was a little child, whether it be from DVDs, television, or even YouTube. I have always had a fascination with talking vehicle media. The best of the bunch have great life lessons, creative character and vehicle designs, entertaining and captivating stories, and a good sense of charm. But with every gold nugget leaves a couple of dingy turds. Dingy turds that have been talked to death on the internet by angry reviewers alike. Despite suffering through both Thomas and Friends All Engines Go and the Bob the Builder reboot, no talking vehicle project has ever fascinated me with its awfulness as much as the subject of today's video. Ever since I heard of Mighty Express, I was baffled by its existence. A show so ridiculously childish and goofy that even after watching the entirety of the show, I am still shocked that many people haven't talked about this show a lot on the internet. All the while, other YouTubers are still dunking on the same exact cartoons while making the same complaints on repeat. While people like, say, Super Origami Kingdom are ranting angrily about All Engines Go, Mighty Express is just there going off scot-free despite being so much worse than either Mattel reboot. To get things out of the way, Mighty Express is terrible. But you ask, Waxler, why though? Though, I have my reasoning as to why I believe that Netflix and Spin Master have concocted one of the worst talking vehicle projects I've ever seen and how it doesn't deserve to be let off the hook from the sea of internet hatred. Because so many of you have agreed with my All Engines Go and Chuggington reviews, I am going to detail as to why this train wreck deserves to be melted down. Within the amount of time I made this video, I could have watched other Netflix projects like, say, the live action One Piece or Scott Pilgrim Takes Off, but no, out of all the Netflix shows I could have watched, I chose to watch this baby show so you don't have to. Buckle up fellas! This is gonna be a one-way ticket ride to depths never discussed before on YouTube. I went on a mega mission to watch the entirety of this stupid show to see if this review could potentially change my mind about my initial viewings of the show. Is Mighty Express simply a overblown train wreck? Or is it simply an overhated cartoon? Let's find out. So let's ride the rails with me as we discuss what Mighty Express is from its history, characters, writing, and world. Unlike Chuggington or All Engines Go, there isn't much deep history to Mighty Express as not much information has been given out publicly due to the lack of interviews. So there's gonna be some speculation and theorizing as to why it was made using what happened during the period of its development. But what we do know is that Mighty Express is a byproduct of a certain Keith Chapman. If that name doesn't ring a bell, maybe his projects can, because he is best known as the creator of both Bob the Builder and Paw Patrol, two incredibly popular preschool shows. While I express that Bob the Builder is a simple and charming piece of children's entertainment in the Chuggington video, Paw Patrol in comparison is just… fine? While it's not as bad as Thomas fans make it out to be, yeah, it's not that good compared to some other Rescue Team Kids shows like, say, Classic Fireman Sam. Paw Patrol, just like Chuggington Season 4, as expressed in its video, does suffer from a formulaic structure and milk toast main characters. However, it has a weirdly fun charm to it that makes it somewhat enjoyable. Keep in mind, this is coming from somebody whose Paw Patrol experience is only a handful of episodes, the Mad Pat theories, and the two Paw Patrol movies, which I watched before making this video. Paw Patrol has cool character concepts and cool world building from the stuff I've seen. But that's about it. 
Unlike shows like Bob the Builder, Chuggington, or Thomas and Friends, I don't have a strong attachment or nostalgia for Paw Patrol. I did watch that show when it first came out back in 2013, but it didn't captivate my mind the same way something like, say, Thomas and Friends did. Speaking of Thomas and Friends, this is where the theorizing starts. Remember what I said about Thomas getting knocked out by other brands in the preschool market in the AEG video? Undeniably, Spin Master's flagship show, Paw Patrol, surpassed Thomas in ratings and toy sales. Then Mattel tried to clap back by rebranding Thomas to become dumber and safer with the Big World Big Adventures era, and eventually the All Engines Go reboot. Mighty Express, in hindsight, feels like a revenge tactic by Spin Master against Mattel for the latter trying to make their show more sanitized in favor of trying to rival Paw Patrol directly. You could say that Spin Master was trying to kill Thomas even further now that the show got cancelled due to low ratings from copying Paw Patrol's fast-paced style. So Mighty Express seemed like a Thomas substitute which ended up being poorly timed as Thomas came back with All Engines Go the very year after Mighty debuted. Another thing of note is that some Thomas fans, including myself, have theorized that Mighty Express seemed to be a backup plan in the case the Paw Patrol movie did poorly. Luckily, that film didn't do poorly, as evidenced by the box office numbers, but some seem to think that Mighty Express was a plan B due to how it was announced around the same time as that movie's development. A way to coup losses in the case of that movie, a big risk on Spin Master's part, flopped at the box office. Mighty Express would launch on September 22nd, 2020 with 52 episodes and 4 specials. Released by Netflix in batches or as quote unquote seasons until August 29th, 2022. This isn't surprising given what Netflix does to their exclusive cartoons. They usually take their cartoons and release one season in batches. Examples include Sonic Prime, the she Reboot, and Glitch Text. And yes, viewers, I will make that glitch text video eventually, please be patient. And with this, that's all we know about Mighty Express development-wise. Though it's absolutely nothing compared to the show itself. Oh boy, you are in for quite a ride. After watching the entire show in preparation for this video, I see that Mighty Express is an episodic children's cartoon about trains that do things for a town called Tracksville, which is populated and run by children and only children. Every episode features one of the trains going to the busy board at Mission Station for their mega mission, which essentially boils down to getting a job done for the day. More on the plots later. On to one of the big problems this show has. All the characters, trains and humans included, are super annoying. It would be one thing if these characters were written well or had unique personalities, but nope. These characters have little to no unique traits to distinguish them outside of their designs. And even then, the designs are kind of bland. More on that in the animation section of this video. Most of the trains are pretty disposable personality-wise. From Freight Nate, Builded Brock, Mechanic Milo, Rescue Red, and Farmer Faye, these trains are pretty interchangeable. They're just happy and go lucky. They aren't distinguishable from each other in the slightest. And when a character does have unique traits, like say, People Mover Penny and her fear of caves, that only lasts for one episode and is never brought up again. When it comes to young train characters, I think of Chuggington. The trainees have unique personality traits applied to decent personalities. Wilson is the clumsy one. Brewster is the strong one, and Coco is the energetic one. What made them decent protagonists was that they had distinguishable personalities that were interesting in certain episodes. Not great personalities, mind you, but they get the job done. I can't believe I'm saying this, but the same applies to all engines go. All of the five main engines are distinguishable from each other and aren't just the same copy and paste happy go lucky personality. Thomas is the confident one, Percy is the cowardly one, Nia is the creative one, Kana is the energetic one, and Diesel is the mischievous one. The protagonists might have annoying voices like the Mighty Express trains, but the difference is that they are distinguishable from each other and have decent personalities. 
I couldn't get used to the Mighty Express characters' voices as much as the AEG characters because they're too poorly written. It's the same issue I had with Chapman's aforementioned other show, Paw Patrol. The main pups don't stand out from each other, and most of the time, they feel just happy-go-lucky. Though there is a plus side to Paw Patrol that I'll mention later, and it has to do with the two movies. In terms of characters with unique personality traits showed constantly, Flicker, Mandy Mail, and Tricky Ricky are the only characters with a surface level personality. And even then, they're still annoying and grating. Flicker is just your average naive baby type character for instance, and Mandy Mail is just an annoying show off a la James from Thomas and Friends. But Tricky Ricky, oh boy, he's just a surface level villain character. And he ain't no Plankton or Doofenshmirtz either because he's not fun. He makes the lame evilness of Diesel 10, one of the main Thomas and Friends villains, look like Bill Cipher by comparison. In comparison to other Keith Chapman shows, even Conrad from the Bob the Builder reboot and Mayor Humdinger from Paw Patrol were more convincing villains, especially Conrad, who had the motive to destroy Spring City to ruin Bob the Builder's reputation and wanted to scrap his machines when they got too close. He was genuinely threatening and I can't believe that. And while I think Humdinger is less intimidating than Conrad, he's at least entertaining from what I've seen. The most evil thing Ricky has done in this show besides stealing stuff was taking over Mission Station, but even then, that was executed better in the Thomas special Day of the Diesels, with Diesel 10 taking over the Sodor Steamworks, even if both were dumb in their execution. Uh, I almost forgot to mention them, but I also hate the human characters too. Again, they're all interchangeable, boring, or annoying. Yet despite Jubilee being a good role model for disabled people, they all suck! On a side note, I know Misha Contrias did a good job in both Mighty Express and All Engines Go, but I feel bad that he has to be in two of the worst talking vehicle shows as both Nico and Reboot Thomas. Going back to the main criticisms of the characters, I think one of the biggest issues with this show is the lack of proper adult or authority figures. Granted, Mighty Express has its own logic compared to Thomas or Chuggington, so I understand why they made everyone kids if that made making it stand out from its other rivals. But making all of the characters kids negates the need for a parental figure that scolds and cares for the engines or even the kids themselves. Not to mention, it makes it less relatable for both kids and parents alike. The relatability is the main reason why Sir Topham Hat is beloved. He cares for the trains he has, when need be, but he isn't shy to get mad at them when they mess up. He served a purpose in being a father figure to the beloved trains on the island of Sodor, like a dad taking care of his children. The same goes with other authority figure characters like, say, V from Chuggington, Captain Star from Tugs, Hannah from Tayo the Little Bus, Big Chris from Rory the Racing Car, or even Bob the Builder himself. All adult authority figures that serve the boss and take care of their vehicles. The only other talking vehicle thing that I can recall without a human authority figure is Pixar's Cars franchise. But even then, all of the main characters, like say, Lightning McQueen or Doc Hudson, are all adults which gives them authority over themselves. There are no adult trains in Mighty Express, like say, Harrison from Chuggington or Gordon from Thomas, which cements how kid-centric Mighty Express is. The lack of adult characters or proper authority figures drags down the relatability of this show. So yeah, the characters are just bland nothing burgers that leave no aftertaste or unique flavoring. Maybe we can disregard these issues and hope the writing is at least good, right? Oh who am I kidding, it sucks too! <laughs> the writing. Oh the writing. It's not much better. In fact, it's worse than All Engines Go and the Bob the Builder reboot combined, despite having less ridiculous train body language. More on that later. Remember how people like the unlucky Tug said that All Engines Go is a wannabe Paw Patrol cartoon? Well, Mighty Express is exactly that. Other than having the same creator, this show is just Paw Patrol with talking trains instead of talking dogs right down to the detail of these non-human comrades being dispatched by a kid at a playset looking building to do a formulaic job in every single episode completed a montage that shows the members getting ready for the day. How original. 
let's start with a big fat episode blunder. The reuse ideas. All of the episodes start the exact same. We see the engines do things, and they get called to Mission Station. Complete to the variety of reused stock footage showcasing the engines going to Mission Station. And then getting cleaned up, tuned up, and hooked up before being sent on their way. And then, the majority of the episodes recycle the same episode concepts over and over again. Notable episode plots that recycle a similar formula involve either A. A train getting into trouble, therefore another train needs to rescue or save them from whatever Or B. The delivery must be made from point A to point B, but oh no, hijinks ensue! Usually it happens from an animal causing trouble, the cargo being unsecured, or the train hauling it gets too careless. Most of the episodes rely on a gimmick or action sequence that makes up a majority of the episode. Whether it be Nate chasing an inflatable dragon after he loses it, or Milo chasing Flicker down the river after he messes up, or even Flicker chasing down a giant robot after he loses it. These episodes feature a main toyetic piece of rolling stock or object that is given to the main characters which is either lost, mishandled, tampered with, or just pulled along. All complete with dialogue that makes you want to cringe the more I hear of it. Yes, Paw Patrol did repetitive stories, with it also having a boy who leads a group of non-human comrades. But that's a rescue show. It has to involve a mission for every episode to show different rescue varieties. At least that has an excuse. Going back to what I said about the two bad Mattel reboots being better, at the very least, All Engines Go doesn't recycle the same formula every single episode. It tries to tell unique stories regardless of the output's quality. Not to mention that some episodes have a decent moral, to give some educational value. The Bob the Builder reboot has the same issue with repetitive stories like Mighty Express, but at least I could tell all of the main characters apart. Like yeah, characters like Scoop, Mock, Lofty, and Dizzy are all bumbling oafs in this version. But at least there are other characters that aren't annoying piles of scrap like Bob, Wendy, Leo, Rolly, Teuton, Stretch, Conrad, or Tiny. In comparison, nearly every single character in Mighty Express is either written annoying or boring to some degree. As a train-focused show, the plot should be more than just train delivers X to Y with constant fast-paced action sequences, oh boy! Do something creative with the engines engaging in conversations with each other, like in Chuggington or Classic Thomas. Stories that are more calm and reserved would do the trick. Not every episode has to have a gimmick of the day, it can just be something simple, with a simple moral. The only episodes that didn't suck were episodes that featured a moral. Like, there's an episode where Nate tries to deliver his comic books without his friend's help but realizes that it's not a good idea. So he has help from his friends in the end. Hooray! If not that, then it just has an interesting storyline. Episodes include an episode where Brock engages in finding treasure in an Indiana Jones parody. Or an episode where Nico and Milo have to figure out how, who has been chomping on the wood throughout the town. Or an episode where Penny has to face her fears inside of a bat cave. While the messages these episodes do produce are harmless, the way it's executed is very unsubtle and in your face. Chuggington, and especially Thomas and Friends, have a ton of good episodes with simple morals. But the difference is that they aren't shoved in your face like a flying banner. Even with the decently executed episodes of Mighty Express that make up 10% of 90% hot garbage, even episodes that don't recycle the same plots over and over are just too predictable at every turn. For example, specials like the treasure one or the racing one go as well as you might expect. They find the treasure at the end and they get gold. Nate and Ricky race and the good guy wins. Hooray! I love predictable riding with zero stakes and memorability. I get it! It is a kid's show. I can't deny that I'm too old for this. But that doesn't give you an excuse to talk down to your audience and treat them like a bunch of brain dead morons. It's the reason why other talking vehicle shows like Thomas and Friends or Tugs are held in such high regard. They didn't speak down to kids and told great morals and stories as of a result. Speaking of morals, there are undeniably cartoons that I enjoy that don't have morals, often, like Spongebob, The Amazing World of Gumball, or Phineas and Ferb. What they did have to make up for the lack of morals are unique characters, good music, and clever writing. Things that Mighty Express sorely lacks in comparison. 
Also, can I just go on a tangent to point out how most of the plots on Mighty Express could have been solved if they just had secured the cargo or put it in a closed box car? Because they used the wrong kinds of wagons for such deliveries. Like, for example, Flicker delivers pizza in one episode and he gets in trouble because of the geese who are trying to steal it. Put it an enclosed wagon for crying out loud. And there's another episode where Faye delivers popcorn and it spills out. Dang, even All Engines Go thought ahead to put glass covering on its own popcorn car. And it's not like they don't have a boxcar model in the asset library, because they do! Do you know what this reminds me of? Sharon Miller era CGI Thomas. Episodes like Pop Goes Thomas or Up Up and Away could have been prevented if they had just secured the cargo or put them in the right wagon. And before I forget, Mighty Express is on par with the Miller era Thomas stuff in terms of recycling the same exact storylines most of the time. The writing is easily, without a doubt, the single worst part of this entire show. It's so childish and degrading that it makes me wonder why people think Chuggington's a bad influence on kids. Yeah, the young engines in that show jester constantly, but at least that show teaches kids something? Why the Express just has no educational value whatsoever in favor of repetitive and dull stories that feel like they have to entertain kids with over-the-top action scenes without any substance. And to top it all off, the characters are all annoying and boring without any reason to care for them. Also, I'll give credit where credit is due for the Paw Patrol franchise. At least the Paw Patrol movie duology made characters like Chase and Sky sympathetic and interesting. I cared for them and their inner struggles in ways they weren't in the original cartoon. Even if the Paw Patrol movies were just okay, in my humble opinion, they at least showed effort in the writing over whatever Mighty Express did. Overall, the writing in Mighty Express is pretty much taped in place by more or less plots strung together by decently directed action scenes that serve no value or reason to care, on top of the characters being flat and annoying. There's barely anything to enjoy here. Well, maybe the world building is good, you might ask, and as someone who usually loves world building, I say, BALDERDASH! Much like Chuggington and All Engines Go, the world of Traxville is pretty colorful and vibrant, all populated by children, talking trains, and smart animals. With the kids running businesses like, say, the mail station, the school, the town square, the port, or the building yard, much like Chuggington, there are no trucks, cars, or planes, so the trains have to be the ones carrying loads around. Though just like all engines go, the world is pretty lackluster and boring despite the whimsical exterior. However, Mighty Express gets it worse for one simple question. WHERE ARE THE ADULTS? I would accept this if this were like Peanuts or Ed, Ed and Eddie, where the adults are implied to exist but we never see them or are obscured, but in Mighty Express, they physically don't exist! Wait, hold on a second! There are knights in armor in one episode that are adult size. Not to mention Santa appears in the Christmas special. And if that wasn't enough, there are implied adult trains like the action chugger wannabe Super Train. Though it's only mentioned in the comic book. In one episode, Rescue Red says he has a grandpappy. So, where are the adults then? How does Tracksville repopulate if everyone's a kid? Who is teaching the kids if the kids are going to school station? How does the education system work? Even with the evidence the show provides that they exist, it still provides the question of why the kids are doing adult jobs like lifeguarding or port managing. Ah! Uh, I, I know this is a children's program, and I need to suspend my disbelief for this stupid choo-choo train cartoon, but this is preposterous! I get that Paw Patrol had its rescue team run by Ryder, a literal 10-year-old, but at least that was one kid managing the one rescue operation. In that show, there were adults handling jobs around Adventure Bay. Here, the entirety of Tracksville is run by several little kids owning individual businesses. I understand that Mighty Express is its own thing like, say, Underground Ernie or Chuggington, but comparatively, those two shows were more realistic because they had more logical world building with some level of realism applied to what's otherwise a cartoony railway. Traxville doesn't feel like a fully realized location, instead it feels like a boring life with space filled with assets. It makes me appreciate how places like, say, the island of Sodor, Big City Port, Radiator Springs, or Chuggington feel like fully realized landmarks with care put into them. 
They wowed me as a child, and they certainly still do a good job wowing me as a growing up. Solar genuinely feels like an actual place you can visit in England, with its lush greenery and cozy buildings. With Chuckington, they took the cartoony railway aesthetic and combined it with art decorative styles straight out of Bioshock. Going back to the trains, the trains can gesture just like other talking vehicle shows. And just like all engines go specifically, they can flip themselves back onto the track. Thankfully, the trains don't stretch out their wheels like hands, or bend like rubber constantly. At least that's something they have over AEG. Also, the engines are capable of operating rolling stock through supposed means like in Chuggington. Except you can't excuse that because their front couplings aren't designed to do that. They look like model train couplers. Some engines, like Red or Flicker, even defy the laws of physics and use their hoses as hands despite having no mechanical anything implied onto them. It's just rubber, what is even moving them? The water? The animals being smart adds to the sheer absurdity of this show as if the wacky cartoon physics and the nonsensical town weren't enough. Characters like the pop star piggies or Goaty feel like they were ripped out of a mediocre illumination movie. I get the need to make the show stand out, but the presence of these stupid animals comes across as taking notes as to what kids like these days. Like AEG, it's very hard to suspend your disbelief when everything is so wacky and over the top that it becomes exhausting. At least Chuggington did its over the top moments tastefully, and when it was a plot point, like in say, Hodge Sails Away or Jetpack Wilson, it was confined to a few episodes. But Mighty Express does ridiculous stuff so often that it actively becomes annoying and nothing special anymore. Like delivering things like a literal volcano, dominoes, a gigantic salt and pepper shaker, unsealed popcorn, a rocket engine, oh wait, or roller coaster cars, all the while some animals or a stupid plot device are hijacking the plot. Like seriously, do you know what this knack for ridiculous stories reminds me of? Cars too and cars on the road. They do observe things so frequently that it's hard to take its character seriously. It's doing these things to wow the audience and to sell more toys, all while not having much of a reason to care for the stuff happening on screen. And all of this is held together by the animation, which is... Uh... Surprisingly not bad, all things considered. The animation is undoubtedly the best part of this show. But without good scripts or characters, it just means nothing. Credit where credit is due, Mighty Express is pretty well shaded and well animated in terms of movement and style. And to give it one positive, I'll take this high quality animation over the cheap, unshaded, plastic-like nature of Paw Patrol any day now. Mighty Express art style is bright, colorful, and well rendered. But like the world building itself, it lends to itself being bland sometimes. Locations like Mission Station, Port Station, or School Station end up feeling like playsets in an open field instead of genuine locations that could feasibly exist. I know I gave Chuggington some criticism for a similar issue with locations and grassy fields, but at least the locations in that show feel like places you can visit. Also, I want to discuss another thing Chuggington has over Mighty Express, the vehicle designs. In Chuggington, they're inspired by real-life trains, Wacky sometimes, but they look functional and could feasibly exist. Freelance designs like Frostini, Cormac, Rosa, or Action Chugger still feel and look like real trains that could exist in real life. Toyetic, sure, but they feel inspired, like how Wilson is directly based on the EMDF unit, or how Harrison is based on Union Pacific Railroad M1003. In Mighty Express, however, it looks as if you took truck designers from Tonka to design trains, all the while not knowing what a train actually looks like. It's evident with some engines that they're just road vehicles on rails. Milo is a tow truck, Red is a fire engine, Brock is a cement mixer, Faye is a tractor, Flicker is an ambulance, Mandy is a post van. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that these quote unquote trains are just imposter road vehicles. To compare designs from Thomas and Chuggington, their fire trains, Bell and Asher, respectively, are inspired by real life fire trains. Meanwhile, Rescue Red is just a normal fire engine on bogies. Out of all the trains, Freight Nate, People Mover Penny, and Tricky Ricky are the only engines that look inspired by real life locomotives. Penny, especially, because she looks the closest to a heritage streetcar. But at the end of the day, it's evident the characters were designed as toys first and practical vehicle design second. 
I don't think there were even any train enthusiasts on board to consult with the designers either. And it's not like the people at Spin Master cannot design good looking trains. Because there are literally good looking trains in Paw Patrol! Like the steam engine right here. Or this diesel engine right here. Where were you Paw Patrol train designers when it was time to work on Mighty Express? Huh? Huh? Okay, I'll give Mighty Express some credit. The vehicle designs in this show are nowhere near as ugly as the ones in JJ the Jet Plane or Underground Ernie. Yeah, those two are better written, but I'm willing to give Mighty some credit here. Credit where credit is due, the character designs are indeed bad, but they're far from ugly. Even if they were meant to be marketable and appealing designs first, they succeeded in that regard, even if most barely look like trains. Outside the engines, the human designs are pretty bland. They look like they're ripped out of Coco Melon or some other generic modern preschool show. While it's cool that they're of different ethnicities, there isn't a lot of variety in terms of diverse body types. In short, it's clear as day that this show is meant to sell toys, from the flashy characters and vehicle designs to the set designs. Maybe toys are good. Surprisingly, the merchandise and marketing behind this show feel beyond lackluster. Let's start with the toys. Spin Master released merchandise that consisted of plastic push-along trains and motorized trains, not unlike the Trackmaster and Playrail merchandise Thomas pumped out. Alongside that were four playsets, Mission Station, Farm Station, Port Station, and a Track Pack, with a fifth playset based on Bugle Bridge being cancelled due to low ratings. More on that later. The toys look cheap and under-detailed, like the Bob the Builder reboot toys or CGI Mattel era Thomas toys. Much like those toys, there is a lack of prominent detail and an alleged feeling of cheapness, or at least from what I've heard and seen online. For a show that was specifically engineered to become a toy line, it's appalling how mediocre the merchandise looks in comparison to what was designed on the show. They didn't even get far enough or sell enough to make the other locations. To give credit to Mattel, at least all engines go and merchandise to resemble the show to a T. Those toys generally look accurate to the cartoon because of their high quality. Speaking of which, the toy sales were allegedly abysmal. Twitter user The Milan Tuner, otherwise known as the Milan Tune channel of the Crotunia series on YouTube, made his discovery that the Mighty Express merchandise at his local toy store was on clearance, with the merchandise sold online being on sale. Nobody wants these toys and this show, and the merch going on clearance couldn't be a better sign of that. Then again, Netflix shows and merchandise don't mix due to poor advertising. Because I keep seeing He-Man 2021 merchandise shelf warm constantly, because nobody saw the show on Netflix. Seriously, I haven't seen a single soul on the internet within the cartoon community talk about this as much as the she reboot. Though, that could easily be another video for another day. Despite that, my point still stands that nobody wants to buy toys from a garbage show that was poorly advertised and marketed. In terms of marketing aside from the toys, there was an official YouTube channel dedicated to the show, much like other talking vehicle shows that repeatedly post clips and episodes from the show. Also, I want to point out that I wouldn't have mentioned this YouTube channel if it weren't for the Paw Patrol crossovers they did. Yeah, Mighty Express did crossovers for the very show it was trying to copy given both have the same toy companies and creators to back them up. They consist of shorts that comprise hodgepodge together stock footage from either show. Also, I want to go on a quick tangent here, but if these are meant to be taken as canon, it raises more questions. How come Adventure Bay and Adventure City have adults but Tracksville doesn't? How come Diesel the dog can't talk while Ryder's dogs can? Oh my goodness. It's evident that none of the Spin Master staff had faith in this show, and it seems like it has caught up to them recently. Given we haven't heard of a proper Season 2 being released outside of repeated YouTube uploads, it's very likely Mighty Express got cancelled. Like, I know Netflix is very scummy for cancelling shows, especially animated cartoons, like, way, way too soon. But this specific instance makes me glad Mighty Express got derailed. Especially now that Paw Patrol the movie, a Project Mighty allegedly was meant to substitute in the case it flopped, did well at the box office. Now that the movie did well, there isn't much of a reason to invest in Mighty Express and Spin Master's eyes. It easily could have been circumvented if the show was marketed well and was, you know, good. And speaking of which... 
Yes, you probably expected this. I'm gonna fix Mighty Express the same way I did for All Engines Go. To fix this show, I would try to keep some episodes to have the Mission of Day formula. Except this time, I would try to add in a lot of episodes outside of the mission structure to make each episode unique from the others, telling the stink morals to give this show some value instead of the same repetitive pace. It would be like how Bob the Builder, the original one, is about a job of the day, but there's a genuine lesson to be made with educational value on how construction work is done or a good moral for the characters. Speaking of characters, I would also upgrade the vehicle designs to look more like trains, making them look closer to an actual locomotive while still being gimmick driven and marketable. Giving them better faces reminiscent of, say, Bob the Builder, another Keep Chapman show, to make the show look less like Paw Patrol. Characters would now require unique personalities without annoying voices. For example, Nate would be the hotshot with a knack of trouble. Faye would be the calm type with an occasional tomboyish attitude. Brock would be the tough muscle with a soft spot for the smaller things in life. Red would be the perfectionist strict type. Penny would be the coward of the pack. Milo would be the smart yet sarcastic brains of the team. However, Flicker, Ricky, and Mandy would remain the same as their canon counterparts, just not annoying. To combat the issue of the kids being the focus of this show, I would change up the show for there to be adults present doing jobs instead of kids. Like, maybe we would have to keep the kids as there needs to be somebody going to school, but most of the kids in this version would be replaced with adults. Max, Liza, and Nico's parents would replace them in this version. And in this take of Mighty Express, they help out the parents running Mission Station. You could also do something like Geotrax, the old Mattel train toy line, where each of the trains has a specific adult engineer helping and driving them, like a parent and child dynamic similar to Eddie and Hodge from Chuggington. I would keep Max from the Cannon show as Flicker's driver in this version instead of Diesel the dog, to give our kid main character some presence. Maybe we could even throw in Tricky Ricky's driver from the Cannon show, Sneaky Stella, in there too. Purely because it would contrast how Paw Patrol had an adult villain and a kid protagonist, this time being Swap. Aside from the kid trains that already exist, maybe there are some adult trains like Gordon from Thomas who help out these kid trains when the call arrives. These two attributes would give the show proper authority figures to make it more relatable to parents and kids. Speaking of Mission Station, I would also like to redesign all of the locations so that they wouldn't look like playsets, and more so like real locations than playsets. For example, Mission Station would receive an overhaul to make it not just a playset, but also a home and communication hub for the engines, adding and expanding not just the main fueling and cleaning hub of the show, but also adding places like train sheds, cargo storage warehouse, and the fueling yard. Ultimately, Mighty Express does have potential in its concept, but the writers and designers wasted all of it. This show is actively frustrating because I see the potential in it. But now I have to finish this mega mission with the conclusion, sadly, because the cartoon failed its mission of being a good show. To quote Gordon, James, and Henry, Mighty Express is disgraceful, disgusting, and despicable. Much like my reaction to All Engines Go, I am completely baffled after seeing everything this show has to offer. Except this time, I also feel agitated by the sheer existence and presence of it. Don't get me wrong, All Engines Go sucks, and it's a stain on the Reverend Wilbert Audrey's legacy. But Mighty Express sucks even more in terms of writing, characters, world building, and memorability. Even though Mighty is not a Thomas ripoff or the worst cartoon I've ever seen, it's probably the worst talking vehicle project I've ever seen. Much like AEG, Mighty Express is a run-of-the-mill, generic children's show. But even while AEG ruins something pre-existing, Mighty Express is the worst show for one main reason. It has nothing new or fresh to say. AEG at least had decent episodes to give it the smallest chunk of worth. But Mighty Express has nothing. It's worthless. Despite having bland and annoying characters with subpar and repetitive storytelling, Mighty Express somehow still has nothing special in comparison with other talking vehicle projects. Not to mention, it has things that are done way better in other kids' shows. Like, if I want to watch a 10-year-old and his team do repetitive jobs, then I'd watch Paw Patrol. If I'd watch a modern take on the talking train formula, 
then I just watch Chuggington. Or, if I want to watch a talking train show in general, I just watch Thomas and Friends. Thomas has endured so many generations and stood out from the competition because it was for everyone from the very start. Shows like Theodore Tugboat, Underground Ernie, Bob the Builder, and Chuggington didn't stand a chance because Thomas was ultimately the better show because of how it was written at its best. It wasn't too childish, but it didn't shy away from being serious and dark. It struck a middle ground for kids and adults to get invested in, and it still does to this day. The difference between Thomas and Mighty Express is that one appeals to everyone, and one appeals to only kids. Even other train shows like Chuggington or Underground Ernie, despite being more childish than Thomas, at least have something unique about them that stood out as original shows. They had a unique charm to in their writing and characters that made them cult classics among those in the Thomas and Friends fanbase. They at the very least told good morals for kids and adults. Brewster's greatest gift, anyone? What does Mighty Express have? Oh, garbage. I can't believe I'm singing the praises of Chuggington right here. But speaking of the Thomas fanbase, I seriously think that Mighty Express is the exact kind of show Thomas fans who hate Chuggington think Chuggington is. It's loud, annoying, pandering, and stupid, all without having any sort of long-lasting impact. Even with another show that Thomas fandom hates at large, Paw Patrol, at least that show, despite having formulate writing, had two okay movies and was trying to teach kids rescue and safety. It had some ounce of value, unlike its sister show, even with the messes Thomas and Friends and Bob the Builder became under Mattel's ownership, they at the very least tried to be good shows. At least the Bob the Builder reboot, despite its repetitive nature and annoying protagonists, had memorable characters and one decent special. At least All Engines Go, despite its cartoony physics and lack of regard for the source material, had okay characters and average storytelling. Sure, Mighty Express doesn't ruin any pre-existing properties, but somehow this became the most degrading experience out of all the cartoons I watch on this channel. Even other talking vehicle projects I hate, like Cars 2 or JJ the Jet Plane, even they had something special to offer. Cars 2 had decent action scenes and an amazing soundtrack with some okay attempts at making Mater sympathetic, and JJ was ironically funny due to the sheer creepiness. They are somehow more engaging than Mighty Express, and I hate them. You know what? Even the Cars knockoffs are more ironically enjoyable than Mighty Express. Yeah, they have worse animation, but at least they're memorably bad. Mighty Express is just misery and like, not memorable at all. In the end, Mighty Express is just a fast-paced, flashy cartoon without much heart. A show made as an executive-driven, soulless and corporate toy commercial first, and the cartoon second. A dud that lacks what made the greats of the talking vehicle pantheon so special. It constantly reminds me of how childhood favorites of mine, like Thomas and Friends or Pixar's Cars, were so special to me. They didn't talk down to kids, and were genuinely trying to make an effort to comfort them with cozy storytelling and great themes. I tried to be fair to Mighty Express like I was with All Engines Go, but somehow I came out with not enough positivity to say. It's just so bad that it was almost draining. Even though I hate Mighty Express, I weirdly recommend it? Because after consuming so much talking vehicle related content before watching this travesty, it highlights how much kids media has devolved within the past decade or so. It baffles me that this show and Bob the Builder were created by the same guy, Yet they feel like worlds apart. It's sad how much Keith Chapman's shows have gotten worse and worse with each passing one. I am not saying that all modern kids media is bad. There are genuinely good ones out there, like Craig of the Creek or Bluey for instance. And the latter blew up online because of how good it is. Bluey proved to the world that kids shows can still be good for kids and adults. Even some of the talking vehicle related stuff like DC's Bat Wheels or TTPO TTPO come across as solid in my opinion. They still have some of the charm that makes older talking vehicle projects good in the first place. But the majority of modern kids' content feels very similar, simplistic, repetitive, and flashy to me. Very basic and lacking of substance. Mighty Express is on the same level as modern kids' content slops like Pink Fong, Coco Melon, 
Brippy, and Ryan's World. Churned out content meant to jangle keys in front of babies. And it's sad generation alphas to grow up with stuff like this. Even though some of the stuff I grew up with in my younger years wasn't great, it held a lot of charm. From the stuff I watched on television or DVD. At least they were teaching something to kids or had charming characters. Not to sound like a boomer, but Gen Alpha growing up with this low effort stuff is just pretty disappointing. Kids content has had its ups and downs in the past decade or so, but Mighty Express was the last straw for me. I don't hate it because it's a bad cartoon. I hate it because it's a summation of everything wrong with modern kids content distilled into a television show. If you're going to make a new talking vehicle project, why not learn from the past legends like Thomas, Cars, or Bob the Builder to make your show better instead of making it whatever is popular at the moment like Paw Patrol or Coco Melon. Since I kept talking about morals in this video, a good one for my audience is that children in general deserve better content. To quote the infamous James A. Williams, kids seriously deserve better than this. And do you know what we had? Realism, clever writing, and common sense. And here's something I'd like to add, great morals. Morals like, don't be afraid to give up stuff for somebody if it means they will be happier. Learning to accept our limits and appreciate where we are in the world. Learning to let go of our ego to help others and instead finding value in the simpler moments in life, etc. These morals stuck to me and I would like to pass these down to my kids if I had any. If I had children, I would find good modern family shows like Bluey to show to my children or even classes like Thomas and Friends. Another thing I hope is that showrunners should learn from bad kids shows like Mighty Express instead of copying the formula of whatever was popular at the time. That way, parents with their kids will be engaged as much as the 4-year-olds watching it. Because as of right now, I feel like most parents get bored watching shows like this with their children. To Spin Master, Netflix, and Keith Chapman, do better next time in whatever endeavors you all have in the future. It might be a while till they realize how badly they messed up, but in due time, they could improve if they make the right choices. It's time to say goodnight to Tracksville with all that I've said. Until the next thing I review, this has been Waxter. Like, comment, ring the bell, and subscribe. And most importantly of all, stay wacky!